In the beginning of this series, you learned why to do cost effectiveness analysis and how to compare net costs to health outcomes. Then you learned about DALIs and QUALIs and how to present cost effectiveness analysis results. In segment five, you learned about using sensitivity analysis to quantify uncertainty. In this segment, we examine how to contemplate and bring to a single time frame the present, naturally, data from the past and predicted future events. Timing is everything. The analytic horizon is how far the modeling looks into the future. This is important because a horizon that is too short will miss important delayed effects, and a horizon that is too long may be distracting and even introduce error due to a faulty long-term projections. The time period portrayed can be as short as 30 days and as long as a lifetime. Each analysis must use a horizon that can capture important differences between options. For a rapidly resolving illness, 30 days may be sufficient. For an intervention that loses its effects within two years, a three-year horizon may be fine. For a chronic disease, the horizon should extend decades, a natural lifespan. When in doubt, go long, it's not much extra work, and missing delayed effects is a worse problem than introducing a little projection error. This figure shows the importance of time frame. In this analysis, we looked at the annual net cost of expanding antiretroviral treatment in South Africa to HIV-infected in individuals who are earlier in disease, with higher CD4 counts. In the first few years, earlier treatment strategies cost more. However, by seven years, the earliest strategy costs the least. This is due to savings from HIV infections averted via viral suppression and thus reduced infectivity. The annual savings continue to grow. Cumulative net savings, not shown in this figure, are achieved within 20 years. Ask yourself, would you prefer to have $100 adjusted for inflation today or five years from now? Almost everyone says today we adjust the value of future events in cost effectiveness analysis because we value future events less than the same events occurring today. How strong is that preference? Would you choose $50 today or $100 in five years? If you find the amount of money today you'd consider equally desirable to $100 in five years, you can calculate your time preference adjustment rate, your discount rate. These discount considerations apply to both health and costs. In general, we prefer to delay illness. Of course, you can come up with situations where it's more convenient in your life to be sick now rather than later as if you could control that. But aside from those considerations, we want to push off negative health events. We have similar attitudes about costs. We prefer to receive money as soon as possible and to delay spending as long as possible. Thus, in cost effectiveness analysis, we use the discounted value of future events. We call this present value. We calculate it using a standard annual discount rate, typically 3%. The math is simple. The future value divided by 1 plus the discount rate to the power n, which is the number of years into the future. Thus, $1,000 in 10 years equals $744 in present value. That's all there is to discounting except for a few practical details. In cost-effectiveness analysis, we adjust the value of costs measured in the past to reflect price changes over time. This has nothing to do with time preferences, which drive discounting. It has to do with making all cost input values comparable and inconsistent. For example, wages tend to rise a few percent per year. Thus, the cost of a nurse in 2003 needs to be inflated to accurately portray 2014 costs. We are all familiar with these trends in our own lives. 
as we've seen the cost of living rise over time. The methods are straightforward. First, pick a reference year. This is usually the year of completion of your analysis. Then, for each cost input, decide if it's subject to normal inflation. If it is, then use local inflation indices to make the adjustment. For example, if the NAS earned $400 per month in 2003, the local wages are rising at 2% per year. That is $497 per month in 2014. In the absence of wage data, you can use general inflation indices. However, some inputs defy inflation. For example, electronics and antiretroviral drugs have been dropping in price. This needs to be adjusted based on input-specific price trends. If you've got costs in multiple currencies or want to translate to a reference currency, then you do that using exchange rates in the reference year. There are two approaches, commercial exchange rates and purchasing power parity. The relative merits of each are beyond the scope of this video.